Okay, and the feedback of the results of previous choice allow us to modify. Now, there's a little bit of new, new uh, material in there. Generated, you know, you have to have experience, right? It's all based on experience. And the experience, you have to have free will. If you don't have free will, you can't learn. You know, you're just following a script. That's not learning. In order to learn, you have to stick your finger into that fire. Then you learn something. If you don't have free will, whether you stick your finger in your fire is irrelevant because you're just following a pattern, you know, it doesn't matter. You're not learning anything. It's impossible to learn or to grow if you don't have free will. Okay, next. All right, we've done some physics. Now let's do some metaphysics. We're going to talk about experience uh, and the role that experience has. Okay, the experience is the generator of the input for consciousness, right? Okay, now just think of this one big consciousness. Where's it going to get its experience? You have to just interact with itself. That could get boring. It also would be slow. It also would be very limited. Okay, so what does it do? It, re it creates smaller units of consciousness that are constrained. They don't have all the, the knowledge or all the data or all the bits. They just have some of the bits. Okay, and they're constrained. And they create a lot of them and let them interact. Now, as they're interacting, if you've got a thousand of these things interacting with free will, now you have just multiplied the amount of experience by a thousand. Instead of one thing interacting with itself, you have a thousand things interacting with each other. The possibilities go way up, you see, because now we have a lot of different things going. So what are the possible interactions here, the possible ways to learn? They're much greater than one thing by itself. Okay, well, who are these little things that are interacting with each other? They're you and me. They're beings that are conscious. All right? Okay, now what are they doing? They're lowering their entropy by interacting. Okay, and this concept, we'll take it a little further in the next couple of slides, but this concept then tells you what the positive direction of evolution is for consciousness. It's lowering entropy, right? And just from that, we can determine logically what's Positive and negative, you know, good versus evil, um, morality, spiritual growth, and love are all defined as measurable quantities in terms of entropy. Mm -hmm. Strange idea. Love can be defined as a measurable quantity of entropy. Can be done. Okay, physical reality. What's physical reality? Experience requires interaction, right? Consciousness requires experience. Experience requires interaction. To make that interaction more effective and simpler, we need a very constrained environment. If you don't have a constrained environment and everything is possible, then it's very hard to learn. Learning isn't impossible, but it's very difficult. Think of it, we're all just consciousness. Okay, and we're getting information, we're getting data streams from other consciousness. Do we know whether or not they're telling the truth or lying to us or making it up? Do we know whether they're sane or insane? Do we know whether it's us in our imagination or whether it's coming from the outside? How can we tell? It's just information. We generate information in our own mind, just, just thinking, our imagination. Okay? You can't tell. It's a very, it, there's too many variables loose. You need to constrain it. Okay? You constrain that by creating a local virtual reality that says, all right, we're still going to just trade data, but we're going to trade data within this rule set. We can only trade data according to these rules. Well, in this reality, what's the rule set that we can trade data? It's called physics. You know, F equals MA is part of the rule set. It's just our physics. There's a few other things that physicists haven't gotten yet, but, you know, and a few other things that maybe wouldn't even be called physics, but mostly physics is the rule set. So here are all these data streams, but they have to take place according to the rule set. Physics, all right? You drop things, they have to fall, they don't go up. You know, these are the rules. Now, think of the virtual reality games that maybe you play, maybe your kids play. You know, things like EverQuest or um, World, what is it? World of Warcraft. Uh, there's, there's bunches of them around, and they may have a thousand players in them all playing at the same time. And where's the rule set? Rule set's in the computer. There's certain things that have to happen a certain way, certain things you can do, you know, certain ways that you interact with other people. But these, People are interacting with each other, and they're interacting with the set, with the, with the program, according to a rule set. And notice that when they do that, their experience, what they see, is calculated just 
as they need it. So as you walk around in one of these games, you'll see trees springing up in the background because until they were there, the computer didn't have to put a tree in the background because they weren't there. So the computer doesn't just make trees because it enjoys doing that. That would waste computer cycles. It makes trees because there's some character there interacting in that part of the set and it needs to put up the trees because the trees are, you know, part of whatever's going on there. Or the orcs or the, you know, the, the monsters or whatever it is that's in your game. You know, they, they appear as they need to appear. Well, the same thing works in this reality and that gets us back to, um, you know, quantum mechanics. When they make that measurement, something has to appear because that's where they're making a measurement. So something comes into physical being there. That wave function collapses to some physical measurement because there's somebody making a physical measurement. If there's nobody making a physical measurement, then you know, the particle just exists as probability. It's just some probability distribution stays that way because that's its natural state. Somebody comes and looks and says, oh, what slit did this thing go through? And it wave function collapses and went through this one. You know, nobody's looking. It goes through them both at the same time because it's just probability. So that kind of gives you a, an idea of where that's, where that's coming from. Okay, now physical reality then is digitally based virtual reality where interactions are constrained according to a given rule set. Now this, the next thing we get to, the last bullet here, says the next level of, re of relativity. Okay, now you know relativity got started by Einstein when, he's, when, he find, when he discovered that there was no fundamental inertial frame. That's where the word relativity comes from. There was no fundamental inertial frame and if you're looking at time and distance, and of course distance per unit time is velocity, if you're looking at time and distance that it's, it's uh, relative. So we get the name relativity. It depends on the observer. It depends on your frame of reference and all frames of reference are equal. It's just relative. Well we step up to the next level of relativity and we can say there is no absolute fundamental reality frame. Okay, within the larger system. This physical universe is not the fundamental reality frame. Sorry that I tell you that, but it is not. Okay, this physical universe is a tiny speck in that larger reality frame. There are lots of reality frames out there that are very similar to this physical universe. There's lots of other physical universes, if you want to put it that way, but of course they're all non-physical because they're outside of this one. All right, um, I say that not because that's, that's theory, but I say that because I've been there. That's where the consciousness experience comes in. I've been to maybe 20, maybe 30 different physical matter realities that are different. Their physics is different. They don't have the same rule sets we have. Some of them have very similar rule sets. Some of them have very different rule sets. But you can go to these reality frames and they're just as physical as this one when you're in them. And when you're in them, this one isn't physical at all until you come back here. Think of the consciousness data streams coming in. Okay, here's the data stream that's our reality. And you kind of just get that one. Well, you just kind of switch over and get in another data stream. And you're in a different reality frame. Okay, there is no fundamental reality frame. Now, there are actually thousands of these reality frames. Many of them. They're all virtual realities. What we call non-physical reality. You know, people die, consciousness continues, they go into this non-physical frame, you know, they drop the body in the physical frame. Well, all that happens, you know, again, you can see that. You can go into a non-physical frame. You can watch that person die. You can watch the consciousness make a transition. You can interact with it. You can help with it. You can, you can watch it. You can do this many, many times until you get enough data that you can uh, 